today, ah, I'm so excited because, you know, the Streamlined Connection is about the connection between the, the um, control you crave and the desire you are the, the, seriously, my brain is not working yet. <laughs> Welcome to the Streamlined Connection. It's all about the um, control you crave and the freedom you desire. And I love talking with other organizers so that we can bring you a lot of different perspectives on how to get organized, because there's not one way to do that. And there's so many different aspects to getting organized and different specialties that my colleagues have that I like to share it because you're going to hear something that resonates for you, that spark that finally gets you to think about being better organized and being a better version of you. Because, you know, most people don't realize that that key to getting organized and to freedom and wealth and prosperity is actually having some control over your stuff and your space. So whatever it takes to get you there, that foundation, I'm willing to explore. So let's just talk a little bit about how tidy is a little different than organizing, shall we? Um, and today we're going to talk about systems a lot. So I'm... For those of you that don't know me, I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. I am a certified professional organizer and a money breakthrough business coach. And that's where the connection between organizing and how we think about organizing comes together and allows you to build wealth by organizing your systems. And today on the show, I'm so excited to have Amy. Um, so we're talking about the mindset shift required to go from solopreneur to team. You might know that many of my clients are actually solopreneurs and entrepreneurs, and many of Amy's are teams, and she works with a team, and I don't. And so I thought it would be nice to have that version because there's different ways of scaling, whether you're looking at it from the perspective of um, staying uh, solo and getting some virtual help, or if you're looking for some actual team to come in and work with you in a more collaborative manner on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so Amy Payne of Lasting Order, she is also a certified professional organizer, and I'm going to check with her on, on one aspect of that in a minute. But she's been running Lasting Order since 2011, and her goal is to help people live their one and only lives with purpose and intention. So it's very similar to my purpose of helping people live a satisfying and meaningful life, and so I love that. Um, her firm helps people clear the clutter at home and at work. And she's most passionate about utilizing technology to make our lives easier. And she's helped me in that regard. And wait, your puppy has a TikTok account? What? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to talk about this in a minute. Um, but she's also super friendly, welcoming, and always willing to help or answer a question. And I love that about her. Um, so I would love to welcome Amy to the show. Hello, Amy. Hello. Thank you for having me. You are welcome, and thanks for putting up with my craziness. Occasionally, I'm so wound up, I can't settle down enough. Right. The ADD no kicks problem. in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so were you one of the first certified professional organizers? You started a little bit, it's right on that edge. No, I wasn't one of the very okay. first. Nope. That's I what I thought. Test, I think in 2014, so okay. I was a little bit behind. I think they call us the inaugural yes. certified class, which sounds way more important than it actually is. It does. I, I do not hold that title. <laughs> <laughs> it was around that time that I first met you. And so I'm like, was yes. oh, she certified like right away? I don't know. Um, anyway, congratulations on that. Oh, thank it you. Turns out not everybody passes that test, which kind of surprises me a little bit, but whatever. <laughs> um, okay. So tell me a little bit about what prompted you to get into productivity consulting in the first place. So I started um, mainly residential. Actually, an interesting fact I didn't tell you, my very first client was in an office. It was a solopreneur, and I helped him organize his paper. So even though the primary clients that I had in the very beginning were home organizing, I have had a few, had a few business clients over the years. But what really prompted me was after I had grown my team and I realized – what all was involved with mm. systematizing my business and streamlining things in order to grow my team, I quickly realized that a lot of 
small businesses do not have those good systems in place. And when I realized, hey, I can take what I've learned over all these years and the ways that I've made it work in my business and help other small businesses, that's really how the productivity side grew. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, how many people start a business and they kind of wing it for the first many years, and then all of a sudden they go to scale and realize, oh, I can't just hand this off because I don't have any documentation, or I thought the systems weren't that important, or they're all in my head. (laughs) It always surprises me, and it shouldn't, how many solopreneurs keep all of that information in their head, or they just have papers everywhere, and they kind of know what they're doing, but winging it is a great way to describe it. And there are a significant number of businesses, even retail locations that are winging it still. So, yeah, I, um, I don't know. I've been on a crusade the last couple of years to help people understand how important having at least a flexible framework in the beginning for you to work off of, to develop your systems is such a great idea. And it's going to save you so much time and help you make more money faster. Um, and it's, I don't know, it's always the afterthought. It's its kind of interesting. Um, okay, so tell me what, do you have a, a subspecialty within productivity? Is there something that you absolutely love working on with your clients? Why, yes, there is, Miriam. <laughs> <laughs> do you tell? <laughs> My absolute favorite, I love all things technology. I'm a self-professed tech geek. Um, Mm -hmm. So any kind of technology tips and tricks. But what I have found over and over and over again with small businesses is that CRM systems are absolutely necessary and missing most of the time. So CRM is customer relationship management. Yeah, great. Well, um, we're going to get into it in depth after the break. This is um, so fascinating. I know you've helped me with my CRM issues over the years, so we can talk more about that after the break. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network, and we'll be right back. The free one-minute mail solution works for email, too, and you can download it at the link below or over there. Maybe it's a, the link. And before the break, we were just getting to know Amy Payne of Lasting Order a little bit more. And um, we have so many things in common, (laughs) but I'm fascinated about this um, overlap between home and business because I too often work with solopreneurs that work from home and most of their distraction is in another area of their house. And so all of the stuff we're going to be talking about today is it is possible to connect it to what you do at your house and your business. There's no difference to think about getting organized between the two. It's just how you're applying them to the physical things that are in your way. Would you say that's true, Amy? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's always surprising that people are super organized at work and they can do everything at work and they get home and they don't know how to set up a laundry system or or vice versa. So, um, and then we were getting into CRMs, which customer management relation. Well, customer, it's gone relationship. Through. <laughs> customer it, relationship management. It's gone through iterations over the years. It used to be just called sales tools. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but tell us a little bit about what that is exactly. A customer relationship management system is a software, typically, that is helping you contain all the various parts of your business. The term is kind of broad, so depending on the software, it runs the full gamut from more of a contact database all the way up to a full all-in-one software that includes you know, invoicing, um, bookkeeping, marketing, sales, all the different pieces, parts. Typically a CRM includes at least your contact management piece, task management, and some kind of project management, hopefully. Yeah, I always think of it as the container that holds all the weird little notes and business cards that are lingering around your desk. (laughs) (laughs) It depends, I actually use Evernote for that, but. (laughs) Oh yeah, depends on the note. 
Right. <laughs> the main thing I just try to describe to people is it's all of the tasks and follow-up that you need to do. If you have a lead or you have a customer, tracking them through the lead process, tracking them through your client process or customer process. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's my, my downfall. I get it all in there. I have good intentions and then I actually get some clients and I forget to follow up with some of the other people. And so having it in a list, at least when I get back to it, I can catch up fairly quickly or, or do quite a few in the same day. So I love that as well, that it's, it, it never falls all the way through the cracks once you have it set up. Yes, that's true. <laughs> it might hit the floor, but it doesn't go through the cracks. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So let's talk a little bit about the mindset piece as well. And I want to um, throw it back to, you know, if how you decide if you need a team when you scale um, and, and the mindset that goes into that. What, right. what are your thoughts on that? So I think there's two different mindsets that we should talk about. The first one is about the shift between I'm doing this on my own to I'm going to bring on other people and grow the business. And then the second mindset shift is really about money, taking yeah. it from a hobby to a true money producing business. So yeah. the first one, I mean, how do you know when you when you want to even grow your business? When I first started my business, I was like, I will never have employees. I don't want to deal with that. I just want to be me. But I quickly realized a, it's not that fun by myself. I'm a very social person and I collaborate well with others, but I don't do well with a lot of decision making totally on my own. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, this is not really as fun as working somewhere because I'm by myself. So growing to a team made sense for me almost socially, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. And then also on jobs, I realized we can get a lot more done quickly with more than one person. And we can serve more clients with more than one person. So I realized in order to really serve my community well, it made sense to expand my team. So, Yeah, I, um, I did not have the same struggles. So let's look at that a little bit. I don't really miss the collaboration on a day-to-day -day basis, but I do miss it having ideas and, and decision making someone to bounce off of. So I put together a virtual team that are experts in the various areas and they help me when those things come up. Some right. of them are every week. Some of them are, are occasional, but um, yeah. And then it, it becomes, do you have a system that you can train your employees so that they are matching your business model and your expectations and things? Right. So, it's, it's uh, yeah, a problem. <laughs> I've definitely had a combination of what you call your virtual team and mm -hmm. real life people. I guess the other ones are real life. They're just virtual, but you know what right. I mean? People yeah, that work in your in, space with yes, you. in person, <laughs> side by side. So I've had a combination of that. I've had, you know, my accountant does, I don't bring him into my office. My HR consultant. I don't bring her in here. I've had business coaches. I've worked with people through SCORE, which is a free, you know, business consulting service. Um, I've worked with a lot of those people as well, but really growing the actual employee part of my business really transformed my business in a totally different way. And it, I think it is a matter of personal preference and how you want to do things. It's, yeah. it's your business, right? You can do what exactly. you want. <laughs> <laughs> and what kind of impact do you want to have? So it, all of that is part of the mindset thing. Like what right. is your vision for your business? And it comes down to, it's kind of tied to the same issue we talked about before where people put off systems for a long time. They also put off figuring out what they want their business to actually look like. The True. fear kind of gets them to start with very baby steps. And then if it starts taking off, then they get excited about it. And then they got to backtrack a little bit. Right. I'm, I'm all about there's imagineering. Whole, <laughs> yeah, there's a whole lot of work that goes into having employees. I mean, it mm -hmm. for me, it pays off. It's well worth it. But there is a lot of work and a lot of mindset shift that had to take place. Um, I met, I was introduced to a lady through a mutual business friend who said, this lady would be a fantastic organizer, you should hire her. And I was at the very beginning of my business and I was like, no, 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 I don't know about <laughs> that. So I was like, let me meet her, get to know her. And I think I knew 
her for six months before I actually hired her because I was not sure that's the route I wanted to go. It's hard. It's a hard decision. Um, I've tried out a couple people that didn't work out, so I feel your pain. And after the break, we're going to talk a little bit more about this and um, get into the money piece of it a bit, because I think we can't continue the conversation with how to scale without talking about money. The Streamline Clutter Solution online course will help you gain control of your stuff and space. What are you waiting for? The link's around here somewhere. And we're in conversation with Amy Payne of Lasting Order today. And we're talking all about the mindset shifts and we're gonna get into some of the practical shifts that have to happen if you are considering scaling your business and bringing on team and the different ways that can look. Um, But we mentioned that there's a money component to the mindset that has to switch when you bring on team. And I'd love to hear Amy's take on that because you all know I'm a money geek. So what, tell me what your take on, on adjusting the money thought process and, and mindset is. Right. I think a lot of solopreneurs start their business and they're, you know, in the trenches doing the work and they're not really thinking long-term, how am I, Am I creating a true, you know, sellable business out of this? Or is this just something I'm doing to make some cash? What am I doing? And even after I hired employees, I think I had the attitude of, well, if I can pay them and I can make a little bit of money, great. But at one Mm. point in my business, I realized this isn't, I'm not making enough to be worth all the hassle to fuss with employees and and deal with basically working full time for not making that much money. And it's, and so at one point, and there's a whole long story we don't have time for behind that. I just, I just made a decision. I was Mm -hmm. like, this is, this is what I basically came down to. Am I going to go get a job somewhere else? Or am I going to keep doing this? And if I'm going to keep doing this, it needs to be financially worth doing. And I just made the decision This is going, this is what I'm going to do. I'm passionate about it. This is what I want to do. And I'm going to find ways to make it worthwhile. And at that point is when I started a, you know, Roth IRA for myself. I started a simple plan for myself and my employees. And I'm like, if this is going to be my career, I need to treat it like a job, like a career. And if I were working full time somewhere else, I would expect retirement plan. I would expect to make money at it. And that mindset shift has changed everything. And we have skyrocketed since then. We've just been on a continual trajectory up. Well, minus a little bit of 2020, but we'll ignore that. Right, I know, the blip. (laughs) Um, But no, I love that because that's kind of what happened to me too. I was going along, I'm like, I make plenty of money. I'm covering all my costs, I'm covering me. And then all of a sudden I went, hey, but I'll never get to retire. And I have to work two clients a day, every day, all week. And then I have to do all my administrative stuff in the evening. And then I don't have a life. (laughs) And while I really enjoy my job, I don't enjoy it quite that much. And it was as soon as I made the decision that it was going to be a thing. And I switched into, I think of it as the entrepreneurial mindset. Like, how do you change from being a freelancer to an entrepreneur? And That's that's it understanding that you're running a business and you're in the business of organizing, not you're an organizer earning pin money. Right. That Mm -hmm. hobby into business thing. And unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, I don't know which way it goes. (laughs) We are in one of those professions that a lot of people believe they're good at. And then they try it a couple times and they do a lot of work to start a business but they never think of it more than a hobby. And so it dilutes the importance of the actual depth of knowledge that some of us have. Right. And it's, it, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with people trying it out, but at some point you need to make that shift or, or just call it what it is, which is a hobby. Right. Um, do you, would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, <laughs> It was even five years into having employees before I truly made that shift. Yeah. So I think that the more we can help others who are starting out in the business understand that that shift needs to happen sooner rather than later. Because your fun of the hobby is going to run out before too long. 
And I found, you know, when I was exploring possibly bringing on assistants and and employees or, or subcontractors, I would hire someone to do a job and they would like halfway through not want to finish it or do all kinds of things because it wasn't what they expected. Right. Um, and so the more we can educate what it takes to and what's involved with being a true professional organizer versus an organizer, which there's nothing wrong with that if that's all you need. But if you've got the the deeper issues or want to do something like scale your own business with the help of an organizer to set up your systems, you might want to get someone that knows what they're talking about. Um, okay, so in terms of mindset as well, we're going to mix up the whole <laughs> thing because, you know, the conversation went a different direction. But when you think about time versus money, mm-hmm. how, what's that mindset look like in your world? How do you describe that to your clients, thinking through the, the difference? Meaning selling your time versus not? That and or is it worth the time to invest up front in setting up a system of some sort because it's going to well, save you time and make you money on the other end. Right. I think it really does depend on your mindset. If you can get into the mindset that you really want to grow a business, then you need to jump right into good quality systems from the beginning. If yeah. you're a hobbyist and you're just out there trying to have fun organizing closets, maybe investing a lot of money in a system isn't worth it to you. But you're also probably not going to last super long in the business where if you know, okay, I want to grow a business, I maybe even want to make it sellable um, at some point in the future, you are going to want to set up things right away, put it into place, get your business systematized. What I tell people, get it out of your head and into a tech system so yeah. that you can train and replicate and grow. If you can't train others to do what you know in your head, you can't grow your business. If you can't replicate yourself on the job, you can't grow your business. And the only way to do that is to document, create procedure and systematize the business. Yeah, I think that's that's a good point. Okay, so, and that leads into how we simplify or streamline a business, right? Because right. that's the other thing. There's a lot of busy work involved in business because you are learning new things constantly. And then you got to weed out what is going to work for you in the long run versus just, oh, that's interesting knowledge to have in my back pocket, but I don't need to implement it. Right. Right. (laughs) That's that's tough. I think it's, there's so many shiny objects. It's really easy to go down rabbit holes and there's so many different specialties and niches, at least within our profession, that it's easy to diversify too much. And in order to really streamline and grow your business, you really need to find your sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. the the sweet spot is, uh, it's hard. And it took me till 2020 to figure it out. So we'll talk more about that when we come back after this break. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. We're talking with Amy Payne of Lasting Order about the mindset pieces you need to have to run a successful business when you bring on team and what tools you might use to help you out with that. And we were just giggling a little bit because, you know, we both have failures or gaffes or miscues regularly because it's part of being human and it's part of being in business. And I think that's another piece that entrepreneurs or people that want to run their own business start missing. They want it to be perfect. We both work with a lot of perfectionist procrastinators. And so do you have any hints or tips on on how to think that through and just let yourself be who you are while you run your business and what that can do to the success of your business? Did you say we work with a lot of procrastinator perfectionists? Because I identify as one. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, and I think that's why, right? But don't you have clients like that? Oh, I've never made that decision because I don't know which one's right. Yes. I haven't done that yet because I'm not sure what to do. Oh, I have to do this other thing first. All of those comments are really procrastination. And there's actually... I've just been studying how our brains work and there's nothing wrong with procrastination per se, but how you work with your own procrastination is what can be a problem. Right. I think that in that case, even bringing in someone like you or me to help out Mm -hmm. just helps 
you think through hiring a consultant to help you with something helps you think through and make quality decisions where you're going to trust your decision that you've made yes. versus just trying something on your own, spending a bunch of money on a system and then it doesn't work for you. So, yeah, I think that's a great point. And, and realizing that one of the reasons we pay consultants and coaches, which both of us always have is that so many people in our lives don't understand what we're going through as an entrepreneur. And so you run it by your mom or your husband or your sister and they go, what? Right. That sounds stupid. I'm not going to, you shouldn't do that. And you're like, do you even know what you're talking about? Am I bouncing this off the right person or no, do I just I feel not. bad now because they didn't understand because they don't have the experience or the knowledge? Right. Yeah. Even a mastermind group or a group of colleagues helps significantly yes. with those types of thoughts, ideas, and decision making mm -hmm. of how, how to grow your business, whether you should or not. I mean, really seeking the counsel of someone else coaching consultant to help you think through what are your goals for your business? What are your intentions? And what's the best way to get from point A to point B? Absolutely. Exactly. That's uh, so important. Okay. So that leads to as how do you begin thinking about your operations and how you simplify your operations of your and, and weed out the busy work from your day? Right. Well, once you've narrowed down what your service offerings are, what products you're going to offer, I guess it totally depends on what kind of business you're in. Mm -hmm. Then you can really hone in on your SOPs, your standard operating procedures. So thinking through, you know, when you get a lead phone call, what do you do with them? Step, you know, one, two, three, four, five or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how are you tracking that information? How frequently do you want to follow up with that person and how? Um, making rules, if you will, around or guidelines around how you're treating people, how you're communicating with them, coming up with your standard, you know, 30 second elevator pitch. How are you communicating your values, your service offerings to potential clients? And then you get into your client work or your customers of how are you communicating to them? What do you do when you show up on the job? You know, all those different things. And you start actually documenting that. When you start documenting it, it solidifies in your brain and it helps you refine how do I want? Because you may not even think about it. You may do things yeah. naturally. But if you want to naturally train someone else to do what you're doing, you better figure out how to write it down and capture that in a yeah. format that you can then teach and train someone else. Exactly. <laughs> do you have a favorite tool for capturing standard operating procedures or do you kind of pick the right one, right fit for the client? I love Evernote. I mean, I'm an Evernote certified consultant because I love it so much. And so anything like that where um, it's information that might potentially change because we're constantly refining and editing, I like to do that in Evernote because you put it in there and it's not permanent, if you will, where if you have to open up like a Word document and save it back as a PDF, it just seems like a lot more work versus right. going into my Evernote note. So I use Evernote for all of those like ideas and thoughts and, you know, things that I'm trying to document, write out step by step procedures. I do that in Evernote. That's great. I yeah, I was just talking to that in a training I did yesterday where I was like, don't put it all in one word document because then you change something and you got to go find all the things it connects to. You have to have each process as its own right. page or note that can come in or out of a binder um, right. without um, messing up every other page in, in there and needing to reformat the entire document. So now yeah. once we've <laughs> created some of those things in Evernote or one note or i mean there's other note taking apps once yeah. you've kind of written that out and honed that process then if you have a crm you can build it out in a workflow or an activity set within your crm so right. that you can apply that workflow or that activity set to a particular project or client and it will populate your step-by-step -step process that you do yeah. once you grown your team, those step-by-step -step process could even be delegated to different members of your team. So right. 
that's the beauty of then not having to do everything yourself anymore. It's wonderful. <laughs> it really is. Um, you know, you helped me with my CRM. God, was it last year already? <laughs> um, and it's finally like just in the last three months, we realized just how much it's actually helping. Like at first it was still so awkward and this and that, and there's still some things that need some fine tuning, but it's helped so much. And, and my assistant can go in there and, and do a lot of stuff for me now. So right. it was great. Um, okay. So do you have any tips on how to communicate well with your team um, so that they are doing things in the way that you want to do it? Like, like, combination of training and ongoing communication right oh, I mean, we can we talk do, more about that too but right we definitely have a training program and i've started to actually develop some online training which saves me a lot of time as i get new people and then yeah. in our monthly team meeting we do small trainings as well and updates it's kind of continual coaching too yeah i love that monthly meeting with a purpose mm -hmm. <laughs> How about that? Okay, well, when we come back after the break, we're going to talk about how using that training can help systematize the um, standard operating procedures and, and help you um, serve your clients better. This is Miriam Ortiz Pino. We are on the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network, and we'll be right back. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. Welcome back. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino with the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And Amy Payne of Lasting Order and I are talking about all the little things that come up when you run your own business. And mostly if you run a professional organizing business, but it actually applies across the board and much of it applies to your home life as well. But let's talk about what systematizing things or creating standard operating procedures um, allows you to do. What's that connection? Why do you want to spend the time doing it? Oh, so many things, Miriam, <laughs> so many things. <laughs> First of all, our brains get full we cannot possibly remember everything in our brain. So once your business grows beyond the point where you know every single client's name and everything about them without writing anything down, it's time for a system. And then in addition to that, growing your team by, you know, having a system allows you to grow your team, which as a business professional, you, it gets you ultimately to your goal of making money. Isn't that why we have a business to begin with is to make money, have a job <laughs> that we like and also make money. People forget that part. So growing your team helps you make more money. And then it also gives you freedom um, by having good systems in place, good procedures and boundaries. It allows you to create your business to be whatever you want it to be. If you want your business to be five four hour days or three 12 hour days or seven days a week 24 7 just kidding we don't want your business to be that um you get having systems in place and being able to delegate and grow your team allows you more freedom to run your business the way you want to run it instead of allowing it to run you it's kind of like the tail wagging the dog scenario you create yeah. generally people create their business because they want flexibility and freedom. And then they find out it's just the opposite. They end up being a slave to their business. So right. Working yeah. so hard. You never have a life, right? Productivity is not about doing more things. It's about doing the right things. Yes. The right way. And so that's where that productivity and technology and systems all marry together for you to live your best life. Really? Yeah. And having systems gives you that framework to measure your KPIs or key performance indicators for those of you that don't know. And, and, you know, if you have an idea of this is what it's going to do for me, and then you can measure that you get to make a better decision about whether or not you're keeping that or not keeping that and, or what needs to be adjusted about that procedure that's not quite working and re reimagine it, if you will. Right. One of my favorite things about my CRM is that we can run reports. So 
we can create reports around where are we getting our clients from and which clients are the most profitable and where are we generating the most leads? How many of those become clients? Tracking it through and then being able to say, where should we spend our marketing dollars? Right. You can't get that kind of information out of your system if you don't have a system. <laughs> you, If it's all in your head, you're guessing. You're just absolutely guessing what's the best thing for me to focus on. Sometimes you want to make a decision to focus on something that's income generating, but sometimes mm -hmm. you want to make a decision. It may not be the most profitable, but you get the most joy or exactly. you, it's something that you just absolutely love to help people with, even if it's not profitable, but a good business owner has the information and the knowledge and the statistics about their own business to make that kind of a decision. It's being right proactive instead of just reactive. Yeah, and even if you don't look at all your KPIs regularly, if you do it a couple times a year, you have some sort of guidance. So, you know, I have some, I track daily money, I track daily because what right. you pay attention to grows. Yes. Um, <laughs> but uh, other indicators, you know, might be weekly or monthly or, or once a year, but it's nice to have some, a, tool that helps track that in some way or fashion or maybe a couple different tools but right right and some of it can even be it doesn't have to be technology based i mean yeah we even have a simple excel spreadsheet where we're tracking you know each of my team member how many hours they want to get per week per month how, mm -hmm. and how are we how are we getting there are we getting to where their goals are are we above are we below and i'm looking at that information every month and additionally the money coming in and which right. area it's coming into and are we meeting our goals if not we need to adjust yeah i have um i actually use a printed page that has some areas to track some of my habits as well mm -hmm. Um, and then it has my KPIs on it. And then once a month I scan it and send it to my assistant and she put populates the more formal spreadsheet in, in the computer. So actually it's in the cloud so that we can all see it when we need it. But me logging in and making that happen on a daily basis wasn't really happening. And she only had access to some of the stuff. And so by having it, just I can literally pull it out of my folder and jot down the numbers at the end of each day helps helped me dramatically right. keep up on my KPIs. What helped me dramatically was I delegated it to my office manager. <laughs> nice. I don't so have she, one of those yet. Someday I'm going to have an online manager. Right. So she <laughs> has the access to all the financials and all the hours and all the scheduling. And so she's able to actually generate that report. She hands it to me once a month for me to then review, which is even better. So <laughs> I like to let her handle the bookkeeping. <laughs> there, it's really important. So this is another great point. Um, I do have a bookkeeper and a CPA and they track everything monthly. I just look at the income daily. Right. So that I know if I need to hop on the phone and generate some more clients right. um, or income in some way, or if I need to speed up something that's in process so that money comes in. Um, but I found when I turned it over completely that I lost track of where I was and mm. I wasn't, <laughs> you might find this interesting. I'm the kind of person that I get to a certain point and I'm like, eh, good enough. <laughs> and then I want to read a book or watch some TV. I don't always necessarily want to do more work. So honestly, being, though, I think that's a good place to be. That that yeah. addresses the perfectionist procrastinator issue. Of there, that is, there has to be a point at which it's good enough. Because yeah. if you're always seeking for perfection, you're never going to get there. Exactly. So that's what I meant earlier about working with your perfectionism. I realized that that keeps me from going overboard. And right. um, that's great. But oh my gosh, it has been super fun talking with Amy Payne of Lasting Order today. And we have to take a, one more quick break. And then I'm going to recap and ask for some last thoughts. And then um, we'll see you after the break. This is Miriam ortiz Pino. Oh my gosh, I can't even talk today. Get the Streamline Time Solution online course and learn easy ways to control your time and tasks. Links here somewhere, down there I think. Amy, let's talk a little bit about what, what your closing thoughts are. How do we tie this all up today? 
It's a lot of things to tie up there, Miriam. <laughs> I know. Good thing we have a couple a lot, minutes. <laughs> got a, a lot of different directions, but I think in summary, the main thing is to change your mindset around where if you want to grow, first of all, decide, do you want to grow your business at all? And mm -hmm. do you want to grow it with a team? Those are two very different things. You can grow on your own, grow with a team, but changing your mindset if you're growing with a team into how do I translate my business out of my brain into paper, into, and I say paper, could be digital systems, but on into a trusted system of, in some way and systematize it, simplify it, so that I can then transfer that information to team members. Whether those team members are vir virtual consultants um, or independent contractors, or whether those are actual employees, doesn't matter. Being able to have good systems that you can work with others to grow the business is very important. So, Fantastic. and along with that, of course, technology, you know, I'm all yes. about technology. So having <laughs> wonderful task management, calendar system scheduling, where do you put all of your notes? Where do you store your files? And of, my, of course, my favorite, a CRM system, so that you can capture all the information and everyone's on the same page and can access the information that they need to do their job well. Perfect. Um, yeah. And I would say, don't forget that you can apply these concepts and listen to these shows with the idea that what can I apply from the business perspective to home and what can I apply from home to the business perspective? And right. systematization is key to that. What can I create a repeatable process for that will help me grow, whether it's financially, money, spiritually, um, emotionally, and how do I delegate that so that I have more freedom and can enjoy my life more? It's all connected, you guys, everything. Um, and Amy has generously offered a free download. It's a CRM worksheet. Um, I used it when we switched stuff up, right? Mm -hmm. Is it the same one? Yes. Um, it helps you think through what you need out of a CRM. So it helps you make a better decision about which CRM to get in the first place. And then it helps you figure out the order to set it up in. And it was a fabulous tool. So we'll have the um, the link to that for you guys. It's uh, lastingorder.net slash product slash CRM selection worksheet digital download with the dashes between the words. Um, and we'll We'll have it in the description so you'll be able to find that. Um, don't forget, you can always um, contact me via email, miriam at morethanorganized.net with comments, feedback, and questions. And next time, we will be speaking with Regina Lark about her new book, Emotional Labor, Why a, a Woman's Work is Never Done and What to Do About It. And I can't wait for it. I'm in the middle of reading it right now, and it is fantastic. It's kind of blowing my mind. Um, also, don't forget, tell all your friends because getting organized together is always so much more fun and that there's lots of resources and other things for you to check out at morethanorganized.net. Um, I, Amy, do you know Regina? You know Regina. Yes. yes. Have you read the book yet? I have not. Oh, it's really good. And then I actually went to a, um, workshop this week where someone else was talking about the same concept from oh, a different thing. So I'm connecting them at some point as well, but it's a really important topic. Don't miss it. Um, and thanks again. Have a delightful day. This is Miriam Ortiz Pino with the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. See you next time.